Good morning from ABC 13. I'm Tom Cook. And I'm Samika Knight. Here's the very latest news for you this morning. We're updating breaking news we sent to the ABC 13 mobile app overnight. A Houston police officer in the hospital after being shot during a violent crime spree. We've mapped out the three different locations. ABC 13 reporter Jeff Feeling starts us off for our team coverage. Good morning to you, Jeff. And good morning to you, Samika and Tom. Yeah, this whole thing ended over here on Tristan and Scott. That's where a police officer was shot and a suspect was is dead. Police say it all started at a nearby Bolero where four suspects carjacked an SUV. But the owner of that vehicle knew those guys weren't going to get very far because that SUV was running on fumes. The vehicle that was carjacked, this 2003 Chevy Tahoe, was found by officers at 6200 Tier Wester and believed to have run out of gas. The suspects then ran to a nearby Catholic church on Maribor Street, where they allegedly confronted their next victim, a priest. A priest, you heard that right, a priest in the parking lot was approached by four black males, again believed this preliminary to be the same suspects. One pointed a gun and pulled the trigger twice. Miraculously, the gun did not fire. The men then allegedly beat up the priest and took his cell phone. Police spotted the suspects just a few blocks away, and one was arrested. The other made it to Tristan Street, where he fired at pursuing officers. An officer was hit by three bullets. His fellow officers loaded him into an ambulance, and he was taken to the hospital. During the exchange of gunfire with officers, the suspect was shot and killed. It does appear that they were on a violent spree. Uh, but of these four, two, two are in custody, and one is DOA, and one is on the run. Officers still investigating everything that happened overnight. Police say they're not sure if one or two police officers opened fire on that suspect. It is now part of the investigation into what was a chaotic night. Jeff Ealing, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. I'm Erica Simon at the Texas Medical Center where that police officer is recovering after going into surgery. There is not a lot of police presence here so far. Just a few officers have come to check on their hurt colleague. Scary moments for the boys in blue. Shortly after the Democratic debate at Texas Southern University, top leaders had to deal with an officer shot. We know he's 29 years old and a five-year veteran of the force. We were here as he was transported from the ambulance into Memorial Hermann. He managed to move his arm, which is a sliver of good news. He then went through surgery for his three gunshot wounds. He's, he's got two wounds. We don't know exactly, but he's got two high and one low. Was he wearing a bulletproof? Yes, he was. Okay, did, did those wounds? Uh... Uh, that's too soon. That's probably investigation. But, but I actually was able to talk to him, putting him in the ambulance, reassure him. I was able to talk to his father on the way to the hospital. I was able to immediately call the mayor on the way to the scene and on the way to the hospital. I advised him that as soon as we got an update here, we got a lot going on in our city. Chief Art Acevedo went on to say that he is frustrated and sick and tired of all of the violence against police officers. We're expecting to get an update from him at 9 a.m. At the Medical Center, Erica Simon, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Home tips on ABC13.com are sponsored by the licensed professionals at Rude Air Conditioning and Heating. From tips to efficiently cool your home to tips to keep your systems in working order, look to Rude and its licensed contractors in Houston. Learn more on ABC13.com slash home tips today. New this morning, deputies say a woman hit and killed by a pickup may have lived if the driver had stopped to help. Deputies say a truck hit that woman on Veterans Memorial near Stubner Park Lane around 11 last night. There isn't a lot of lighting in that area, and investigators are now checking businesses for surveillance video that may show the suspect and the truck. The topic of gun violence was one of the main talking points during the Democratic debate last night at TSU that you watched live here on ABC 13. Former Congressman Beto O'Rourke talked about his hometown of El Paso and the shooting there that killed 22 people last month. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. That was one of the sound bites of the night. And after the debate, our anchor Tom Abrams talked with O'Rourke about what he said. Certainly one of the big moments in the debate last night at TSU was Beto O'Rourke and his talk about gun control and taking away from people guns that he said were meant for battlefields. Now we had a chance to ask him about that after the debate 
and he didn't shy away from what he said on stage. I can't tell you how many AR-15, AK-47 owners have come up to me and said, look, I'm just as scared as you are about my kids in school. I know we've got to do something different. Uh, in some cases, they agree with me. In some cases, they don't. In every case, they want to have the conversation. They know that what we're doing right now is not right. So I'm confident we can bring in our fellow Texans, our fellow Americans, Republicans, Democrats, independents, gun owners and non-gun owners alike to do the right thing. Ultimately, we will. Whether Beto's big night translates into anything in the polls or in terms of money, we'll have to wait and see. But certainly, he'll have another shot when the Democrats get together for another debate in Ohio in October. Reporting this morning from TSU, Tom Abrams, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, after O'Rourke made his comments last night, State Representative Briscoe Kane, a Republican from Baytown, tweeted, quote, my AR is ready for you, Robert Francis, referring to O'Rourke's legal name. O'Rourke called it a death threat. Kane replied, calling him a child, and then Twitter quickly took down that offensive tweet. O'Rourke's campaign turned the memorable quote from the debate into a T-shirt and began selling them online overnight. Well, it is finally game day for the Houston Cougars. Go Cougs! Go Cougs! They're playing with the Washington State Cougars in the 2019 AdvoCare Texas kickoff. It's happening at NRG Stadium and is being broadcasted live on our sister station, ESPN. Washington State beat Houston 25-22. to That's old news, though. That's when they last faced off in 1988. The Aloha very old Bowl. News. Very old. That was before the game, though. Today, the Tejas Tailgaters are hosting a tailgating event that starts at 4:30 this afternoon. Oh, well, let's go. Go Why Cougs! Not? Yeah, just bring your two children along. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, it's October 13th. You know, good luck for the Cougs. Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is it? September what did I 13th. Say? <laughs> she said. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Sorry. Just kidding. Moving right along. I have fall front in my head. <laughs> That was the last time. The last time it happened was actually October 13th, 2000. All right, weatherwise for today. We've got some heat to talk about. Less rain, more heat in the forecast. I think by Sunday we start to see a better chance for some wet weather in the forecast, especially by next week. But notice this big swirl in the atmosphere. That is an area of low pressure in the upper levels, dragging in some drier hair, air uh, ahead of that, and that is going to lead to some mostly hot conditions here across southeast Texas. Eventually you'll see those rain chances beginning to build. You're seeing the rain, though, starting to pool across the Bahamas and Florida. That is with potential tropical storm number nine. That is expected to become Umberto as we get into the weekend and the current track of that is moving a little bit closer toward Florida later on tonight and then eventually pushing along the coastline there. Already seeing tropical storm watches and warnings in effect for the immediate coastline of Florida and into the Bahamas with tropical storm force winds already blowing through the area and also the potential for some heavy rain. That heavy rain stays away from southeast Texas. It does look like we could pick up one to two inches of rain with some slower moving storms that we'll encounter as we move into the new week. Temperatures will drop off this weekend into the upper 90s and then with some added clouds and rain showers, those temperatures should be hovering somewhere in the low 90s. Bree. Well, Alita, looking ahead to this weekend, plenty going on this weekend, and that includes some construction and closures to remind you about 610 West Loop northbound and southbound ramps to US 59 northbound. This starts tonight at 9 p.m. It lasts all weekend long. Your exit alternate is US 59 southbound. You turn at Chimney Rock. All right, that's ABC 13 Eyewitness News for this morning. Have a great weekend, everybody. Go Cougs.